that. That uh, that's a very expensive camera, Eddie. So a license plate yeah. camera has to be close, focused, and you need IR. So at night when it rolls through, all you see is a license plate moving. We can't remote view that, can we? Yet? Not yet. But Alan's looking at getting internet there. If you internet. did, we wouldn't do it for Wi-Fi, dude. It would just be for the cameras. Right. right. So, well, should I should I save talking about that till we start the official? Yeah, I got I mean, let's let's wait uh, five more minutes and see what happens because it's not an official meeting unless there's a quorum. So we can chit chat and talk, but it's not an official meeting. Okay. Well, I mean, I can talk about all the stuff now if you want. Absolutely. Know. Yeah. This is America. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I talked to Comcast about the internet and basically they looked at their, their like map that shows where all their coverage goes and that area is not really an area that they service mm -hmm. and i'm looking for i want to use the exact wordage oh there's no service tap in the area so right. even though there's lines that are right there on the road it doesn't mean anything so what the guy was telling me is that they would have to um, do construction to get a service tap in the area so that we would have the internet there and they'll cover up to eight thousand dollars of construction costs and then we would have to cover the rest and so i was talking with erica about this because she mentioned the internet there as well she wants to have wi-fi there and she did say that she's looking at a way to potentially cover that construction cost with some sort of funding she has. So if we did that, it would have to be Wi-Fi there. Well, who's that gonna help? Well, she thinks that the people that go to the park would wanna use the internet. Like- They'd have to like, all sit around the refreshment stand. Yeah, I, I mean, I did, I did ask about that as well. And they said that the range definitely wouldn't cover the whole park. It would cover the immediate area, like the pavilion, the, the kids area, the concession stand area. Uh, you know what's going to happen? She hands out the password. We hand out the password. You get 10 people downloading stuff there. And now you won't be able to look at the cameras because you'll eat up all the bandwidth. Uh, he did say it was gonna be about eighty dollars for like the low grade internet, one hundred and twenty five for the mid tier, which is what he sort of recommended. If you go through all the huge cost of getting the internet there, you might as well have decent internet. Which are, that's, a, that's a month. What's that? That's a, that's a monthly fee. Yeah, that, that would be the monthly fee. And they did say they can do a seasonal shutdown too. So during the fall, winter months, we can shut it down. It's like a $5 cost if we wanted to do that. Because I know we were saying, you know, it might be nice to keep the, the cameras on the, the website so people could see what's going on there. Yeah, I fully agree. I think the most logical thing to do is just have internet there for you to connect the modem to the camera recording device to the NVR. But if... Erica thinks that getting a grant pays for everything, and that includes Wi-Fi, then we'll have to get a lot more service there. A hundred megabytes will never do it. I mean, so that's what you have at home. Yeah. Is there yeah, another I, sorry, go ahead. Is there another company? Does Charter go by there or I think it's they, Charter? I I tried to uh, contact Comcast about it originally because I just wasn't sure who serviced that area and they they said nope this isn't us you got to contact Charter so I did. Well, so that's Charter you're talking about. Yeah, not Comcast. Right. But the guy he did the guy I was speaking to he did let it slip 
I think, where uh, he was talking about people who, like, live up in the mountains and stuff, and the construction costs, you know, would be, like, millions of dollars in order for them to get a service tap and get internet. So he said sometimes what they do is they get satellite internet, which isn't great, but I, it's a potential option for us, too, if they come back with the, a cost for this construction that is very expensive. About if we're, if we're just trying here. to get security cameras, you know. Yeah, we don't need a whole lot. A hundred megabytes would be plenty for the security cameras. That would be plenty. But for Wi-Fi for a bunch of people, oh my God! Then you're gonna have people sitting down there in the middle of the night downloading stuff, and you know the guy that doesn't have internet at home is gonna download movies outside our refreshment stand, then go home with a recorded movie on his phone and watch it. What could be involved with the construction? I mean, what do they got to do? I have no idea. I don't think it's construction like we think of construction, you know, like building a building. I think it's probably something on the side of the road, maybe a box, you know, that they run lines in and out of. That's what I'm thinking it is. Well, if they're covering eight thousand dollars, that's a that's probably something substantial, though. Maybe, but there's no houses right there, so I didn't even think about that. So what they'd have to do is go to. I wonder if that mobile station on the other side of the highway, those two gas stations have cable, you know, and they could just they pull a tap from there. You think they got? You thinking they got to run a hard wire? Yeah. Oh. oh so they wouldn't way. just. They're not just going to cut into the big fat cable that goes by River Road. They're going to go upstream or downstream from us and find a connection oh. and then tap that connection. Or else if they cut the cable, that means people lose service while they're reconstructing. Well, I talked to that guy yesterday that he was doing the, uh, the survey analysis and he's supposed to get back to me middle of the week. That's cool. I know uh, Frontier is starting to creep in and they have fiber. I don't know if they're anywhere near us, but on a main trunk like that, they may be. I know people that are paying $30 a month for five, 500 meg download, fiber only. Well, no I'm gonna, we, can, we can ask some other people, you know, after we get this, after we hear back from this guy. You know. Yeah, you're doing the right thing. Let's see what these guys say. Okay. And you're doing something with volleyball now? Did you try that yet on Fridays? Yep. Uh, last Friday was the first day. It was a small turnout, but the people, they had fun there. Um, I expected to keep building up again. You know, it was the first week. I'm not sure how many people heard about it, you know. Um <laughs> It was warm out too. Once it cools yeah. down, there's nothing to do outside. Yeah. So, yep, that's going for the second night. Uh, we got a few more teams signed up for basketball. We're missing a, five, a fifth and sixth grade girls team and a seventh and eighth grade girls team. And we might have to combine with Ashford to make that happen. You have some kids in that group signed up, just not that's enough. You had some kids signed up, just not enough. Right, not enough to make a team. Not even five. You you need a minimum of five. You know, at least. And, and uh, even uh, I asked the other rec directors about that. You know, I was thinking that five was not enough either. But they said, well, there's a bunch of timeouts and stoppages of play and whatnot. So there have been teams of five before. It's not a matter of stamina. It's a matter of when one of the five can't make right. it, you only have four. Well, what, what, what happens in that situation, from what I'm told, is the team will take a forfeit and then the other team will send over a player oh. and they'll end up playing anyway. It just doesn't count for anything. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. As long as they get to play. Right. Pickleball. Okay. So I was trying to get that going again because I have a night that I can give pickleball at Hall School. And I contacted Kim Kowalshin, who formerly ran the program nightly. 
she's moving out of town, so she can no longer do that. But she, she gave me a name of somebody who could. And I actually just heard from that person today. He says he can't do it either. So I have to hunt for another person who can do that. That's, That's all I got. Steve. That's Steve? Yes. His brother John People plays too. His brother John might run it. I'll reach out to him too. I have all his contact information. But that's, you know, it's so, like handing the keys to somebody that I don't know at all, you know? So I'm just trying to get, you know, somebody to tell me, hey, this guy's a trusted, reliable person, you know? John, his brother, Steve's brother, John, used to run the men's basketball before he quit and handed it to me, so. He okay. was, he had keys before. Okay. And he's a coach. He was a basketball coach, baseball coach. All right. Well, it sounds like he's a trustworthy person. I mean, yeah. If he's, well, if he's willing to do it, if he's willing to run it. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll reach out to him tomorrow. All right. We already talked about the clay. Yep. I ordered 10 tons and it's delivered. It's at the end of the, the hill right before the field. So I didn't know we were supposed to get a huge amount of rain tomorrow. I'm actually thinking that I should see if the Troy has a tarp or something to cover it. What do you think? It won't go that far. The clay, that clay is pretty sticky when it gets wet. It won't go very far. Okay. The water will kind of sheet off the clay anyhow, won't it, Mike? Yeah. So it's good. I'll just leave it then. You aren't going to get a tarp on it tonight. It's going to start raining any minute. Okay. You're fine. No tarp. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's next here? I checked. Yep. I've, I've checked the security system twice now and it was working just fine. We went there to see if we could see somebody flip the toilet over. Great images. Just a year old. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I saw. Yeah, I spoke with Troy about those replacing those electrical boxes, the underground yeah. ones. He says they they just haven't had any time to do it. They've been uh, they've had some time, but then you know we got a week a week's worth of rain, you know, and then it happened again and again. So I, from what I understand, Bethany asked him to do this, or maybe even maybe even Maureen. I'm not sure, but. They've been trying to get down to do it. There's just not enough time. So that's okay. that'll probably be a spring thing. I'm just, I was, I was worried about people falling in the holes there. You know, it's not enough. I don't think they would. And it's really the lawnmowers that are screwing it up and they're probably done mowing for the year. Okay. So you guys would probably know about this. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Steve Davis visited me and his uh, son passed away in June and he wants to make a donation to have some sort of uh, memorial bench at River Road next to the basketball court because he liked to play basketball there. And I went through some uh, paperwork that Maureen had and it, it looks like the entire job is going to cost somewhere in between a thousand and two thousand dollars um you guys know anything about that there's memorial benches all over the place I don't know I spent the day with Mike putting plaques on them <laughs> yeah there was uh the benches or the benches she bought the benches and then she hired uh was it Su was it susie wasn't it susie from stafford that uh, poured them i think it was the concrete the concrete poured them in the concrete i think it was john susie susie's concrete and stafford that did the concrete work around them so okay. did we pay for the base and they paid for the bench or did they pay for everything i don't know the breakdown on who paid what or if they just made a donation of a thousand and we picked up the rest i don't know that maureen or Maureen, what would be the only one that would know? 
because the bench was a few bucks. It was. The bench is so you With got the cost of the bench and the cost of the base and the installation. One of those benches, Maureen said, was installed by the public works guys. I'm not sure which okay. one. But maybe they well, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. Now, to, to now, the, now that you say that, I remember seeing them down there doing one of them. They did we the concrete. Need, go, go ahead. No, they, they did the concrete, you think, Mike? Yeah. I remember right. seeing them down there doing it. I think it was the I think it was the first Do we one. Have the need for, right. Do we need another bench at that location? Well, if that's where they want to put it. Yeah. I think there's right. two. I think there's two on the parking lot side, maybe yeah. on the other side. That's what I was thinking. Put one sure. on the other side. I mean, he, yeah. he he specifically requested that, you know, so I don't know what else we could put at the, the court besides a bench. Yeah, I don't think it hurt to have two more benches on the other side. I get tired watching people play basketball. Well, we can put one, we can put the one that somebody's willing to pay for, and then if somebody else wants another one, then we'll have a, still have a spot for it. No, I kind of set them up symmetrically so that the new one goes across from one of the other ones, and you got one more spot for somebody in the future. Right. They also have. I would extra long. I talk to the gentleman, though. I talk to the guy, bring him down, and have him point exact. Tell him exactly where you're going to put it, so he knows, and so that he's in complete agreement. Um, I just think that'll avoid any kind of problems down the road in case he didn't envision seeing it there. Or you can just say, here's our next available spot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, but that's a good idea. Sure. But what do we have to do? We have to get him a number. Are we Are we expecting him to pay for all of it or? He didn't, he didn't give me yes. any details with how much money he has. You know, I told him I would get back to him after I had a ballpark number. And unfortunately, 1,000 to 2,000 is what I came out with. So that's not too accurate. Well, I think I, the bench is a geno. And it's probably a geno to put the concrete in easy, right, Mike? Yeah, it seems high to me, but. Then you got to create a little plaque. Yeah, we have to have the plaque made. We must have receipts for that as to where we where we bought those. Yeah, I don't know. So it's those three components. It's digging a hole, making the base, and pouring it, and putting a bench in, then putting a plaque in. The plaque goes there on the concrete, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the benches that Maureen bought, she, uh, they were. Two of them were like almost $600. And then one bench she bought for the TOB field was 800 something dollars. And then uh, I found a bill for a plaque that was 300. Okay. Not sure specifically which plaque that is. Cause I guess there's different kinds of plaques. And then I think it was another 500 to have the concrete put down. Yeah. Well, that's about, so it's like 1800 bucks. Yeah. A couple of those plaques, I think, might be less than 300. That sounds kind of high to me. That plaque, that $300 plaque might be the one we put on the stone by the flagpole. Yeah. It's a little bit bigger. Okay. So, so you don't want to match the exact bench that we had if you can. Okay. Right. Yeah, I can do that. Unless, unless we want to have a a longer bench. That's the only thing I can think of. I think they make it the same style, but just much longer. I was looking at that. Those were those were about eight hundred, I think. So I mean, I could I could just hit him with the numbers and see what he says. You know, he he might be interested in doing a big bench. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think Mike's right. You're somewhere around eighteen or nineteen hundred dollars. 
So maybe snoop around a little bit more and see if there's, I know you're not going to get a bill for what the guys at public works did, but you know, see if there's a bill, you don't, you can't find old bills for putting concrete down anywhere. Just that one that I found in a folder. All right. Not that much money. So you could also measure one of the bases and call somebody local that does that and say, Hey, what would you charge me to put a base in at river road four inches deep? And I don't know how big it is four by eight or whatever the size is because okay. prices may have changed. Right. Okay. I think the last thing that I have here is to report on the Wellington tree lighting. I talked to the Santa Claus finally, and he said he was planning the roots. What days do you want? So I wanted the first weekend of November because that's when it typically is, but he couldn't do that. So it turns out that it's going to be November 10th. And the town hall, old town hall is open that day. So I reserved that. And 4-H is interested in doing something. Girl Scouts will do something. Historical Society will do something. So I just uh, have to get in contact with the Boy Scouts. I've sent out a message. I didn't hear anything back. And then I got to get some trees, tree donations. And uh, so, yeah, that's coming together pretty good. That's good. I think in the past we opened that up to anybody, not just like Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. I think families could do it too somehow because I remember doing it with my family. Doing what? Oh, decorating a tree? Yeah. 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 I thought yeah, it was that, like a contest. Yeah, it is a contest. It's also, it's a, it's a, do, it's basically like a donation to Parks and Rec. Um, it's like 40 bucks. You're sponsoring a tree and then you go decorate it. Right. And then that one of those trees will go, well, all the trees will go to Maybe. need the trees. Yeah. I'm not sure how to do that besides put your name in a hat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think she, I think we used to, she used to talk to the human services girl to find out who needed the trees. And then she got somebody that had a trailer that would help her deliver them. Oh, cool. Don't remember who. I'm going to, I'm going to um, contact the A tree farm and start there. She's, uh, she told me that she had like seven different ones that she would ask, but she would only do one per year because she felt bad asking the same one over and over again. So I'm just going to pick one and call and see if they'll donate some trees. That's cool. Good. What do the Boy Scouts do? I think they make and sell wreaths, right? Isn't that what they do? That's what the notes say. They make yeah. wreaths and then they make a bonfire. Oh, perfect for Boy Scouts. And I got, actually, that's a good question to ask you guys. What time do you feel would be a good time to run this whole thing? Uh, Santa's coming between 7.30 and 8. I was thinking that people don't want to be outside in December for very long. So maybe 7, 6.30. People usually leave after they see Santa, I'm told. Yeah. They got a bonfire. They could stay warm by the bonfire. It's true. I, I have never gone to one of these, but I hear they're great. And I have no input. I apologize. But I, she must have an old itinerary from a couple years ago. I, I haven't found it. I mean, I could ask Maureen. I, I actually talked to her a few times recently. Um, is, the tree, is the tree lighting in the tree contest the same night? Yes. I don't remember staying for the tree lighting. I remember decorating the tree, but I don't remember the tree lighting. You gotta get if you're gonna do both, if you're gonna if you're gonna do both the same night, you gotta have time to decorate the tree and then go outside for the tree lighting. Right. So that or, that would definitely be open. Like the the people would have access to the the old town hall, probably like five. You know, so they could come and decorate the tree well beforehand. 
you just want might want to make a note or let somebody know well i don't know how do you do that how do you say santa's coming at 7 30. you do that i'm gonna send it i'm gonna put it on the website facebook i i could send it home in a digital backpack also and just just so that people know they can't show up at 7 15 and start to decorate their tree there if they want to really see santa they're going to miss them because they'll be inside right well i can put a time on it too you know you have to, the the tree decorating portion is from blank to blank and then yeah. just really yeah. cut that out you know my idea i i, I had an idea because i think covid still might be a concern so my idea was that you could go in one side make a loop look at all the trees take your time but go in a circle and then on your way out the um the 4-h girls would be handing out their cocoa and and cookies so you get to go outside with that because i don't want you know people loitering inside the building drinking their coffee and right keep it moving that's what i was thinking right i like it i agree all right how much time to trim a tree an hour or two hours not that long. Yeah, not even an hour, I don't think. Okay. As I recall. That's a good timeline. All so right. if they all start at five, they're done at six. All right. Oh, I had something that I don't have written down here that I absolutely need to talk to you guys about today. Joe, do you remember when we were at the, the park and there were people going by the track with their dogs with weights? Dragging the chains, yes. Yeah. So I got a call today complaining about that. So yeah. somebody said that it's, it's making grooves in the track and the walkers and runners are uh, upset by it. One guy almost uh, turned his ankle on it. So I think that needs to be addressed. So how would you want to handle that? I think yeah. you got to put up a sign that says no dragging chains. I thought the same thing the day you and I saw that. I thought it was an anomaly and you'd never see them again. But obviously they're not being stopped. So they're doing it. What? They're it, dragging. The dogs are dragging a chain. The yeah. dogs had collars with chains. And at the end of like five to 10 feet of chain, depending on the dog, they had old weights from windows. You know, the window weights oh. that used to have the ropes and, and they were oh, dragging they're trying, those. They're trying to tire them out. They're, yes, but they were making pretty good size marks in the trail. I can see that, yeah. This guy also mm -hmm. said that he saw a dog pulling a, a sleigh or, or a sled and a person was, was riding it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's, that's gotta stop. How about no dogs on on the on the trail at all on the on nah, the track you can't at all. do that you can't do that a lot of people walk dogs on that trail but i think no dogs care you know no dragging of chains and weights behind dogs we have to have a sign that says that and once the sign's up we can enforce it so where where would i go <laughs> get the sign for this and then how do i get the sign up like do i do i have to go buy a pole and then have public works install the pole to put the sign on it or go down there and look at the signs that are there now maybe you can get another sign under an existing sign on some of those stakes or or on one of the uh, actually on one of the the, the posts that have the bags oh yeah they're going for oh, bags. A poopy post if you're a dog owner they're going to go for bags here's your sign yep Okay. So I'll I'll go there tomorrow and I'll see what we can put signs on. Okay. And then I I'll post just... on a web post it on the website too. Okay. You know, I, I don't know the exact verbiage, but this must be some new thing people are doing to train their dogs. Maybe go on the internet, Google it, see what they call it, and then go to our site and say, you know, it's come to our attention, this is going on. We cannot allow Dogs dragging chains in our park. Okay. That was bizarre. <laughs> yeah. Well, according to this guy, it's been happening every day. Well, that can't happen then. And it's dangerous. And it's going to ruin the path. Right. Yep. 
Okay. People are idiots. <laughs> oh, well, I'm. It's really the only place I could think of that people could do that with their dog, bro. Right? You can't do it on the street. Well, I guess you could. Right. They need a yeah. They need a gravel path. You can't do it in the I've grass. Never, I use rails to trails a lot. I've never seen somebody do it on rails to trails. I bet they'd get kicked right off. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's I, there's a place that makes jerseys that I have to go to as well. I think they might make anything. It's right in Connecticut next, or sorry, in Willington next to Willington Pizza. Okay. So I'm gonna go in there. I'll ask about the sign. I'll I'll go in there for the jerseys tomorrow. I was planning on doing that anyway, and then I'll ask them if they can make signs. And I guess that w- we I would use the River Road maintenance money for that. Yeah. Yeah, because you're preventing us from doing maintenance on the trail. That's perfect. But I, I don't know what they call that. They must call it something. So you got to find out specifically what's that, what that is called. It's or neat. else you're going to have a 20-word a sign. <laughs> Those might please, be- don't, please don't exercise your dogs with weights. <laughs> then you can see some dogs, like Muscle Beach dogs, Mike. Yeah. It is the craziest thing. And one of the dogs wasn't a big dog. It was like a little mutt and she had a small chain and a small weight behind it. It's not a bad idea. It's just, re- it's just, it's destructive. Destroying the trail. Yeah. All right, well, I'll, I'll look into what that's called if it has a name. Maybe awesome. what we should, maybe what we should do is, is give them the option We'll we'll get little little uh, two foot squares of chain link that they can hook their dog to, and it'll it'll drag it smooth, right? Like an like infield, we, like we used to do the infields. <laughs> That's a good option. Hey, if if you can't stop them, give them give them something that'll work just as well. I I could see somebody coming up behind one of those people walking the dog. That one gal had do- a big dog that probably easily had ten feet of chain behind it. Yeah, so you don't need that. They don't need that much chain. I'm surprised there's that much chain. One of those gals had a ton of chain and weights, so I could see somebody running and not paying attention and stepping stepping on, on one of the weights. I think this guy was just concerned about spraining his ankle on, you know, in a in a divot. A gully. Yeah. Yeah. But if somebody's riding on a sled getting pulled by a dog, that's got to be yeah. terrible. It's even worse. That makes no sense. That had to be one hell of a big dog to pull somebody on gravel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it had wheels, it's one thing, but sled? Hell, I couldn't get yeah. on a sled. That's, I mean, that's weight training at that point. That's more than tiring a dog out. That's what yeah. I typed into Google dog weight training to see if anything popped up, but. I, I can't find anything yet. Well, dragging chains. I just looked it up on Google. What do they call it? Dragging chains, and then there's weights. They use it to, for pit bulls, choke chains, dragging chains. You know. So maybe that's what it's called. Dragging it. No dragging of. No dragging chains allowed, or dragging of chains not allowed, or something. I don't know with animals. I don't know. Yeah. You, I'll leave it to your discretion. No animal dragging chains. <laughs> no cha- chain dragging. How about that? No chain dragging with dogs. People it's are going to read the dogs. sign and go, what the hell is chain dragging? I know, right? <laughs> I wouldn't know what it is. People that know it will know. That's true. But I'm all going crazy. At this point, I'm wondering if, if we should narrow it down to dogs and maybe just leave it as animals because next thing we'll be having people out there with cats doing it and you know other farm animals (laughs) i had a kid that worked for me and he weight trained by pulling a sled with weights on it and he would do it in open fields so i don't want somebody down there with a sled with weights on it working out walking around that thing with weight 
So, so, so not even limiting it to animals at all, just in general. No I, I think creature of any kind. <laughs> yeah, path is for dog walking and people walking only. No weird exercising on the trail, please. <laughs> yes. We've lost touch. Jesus. Let's, let's think about this a little bit because it's maybe instead of just saying no dragging of chains with dogs, it should be, you know, foot traffic only or something like that. Do we have a sign that says no bicycles on there? It should be a sign that says it, but I occasionally do see one. kids with bikes. Me too. There's people with bicycles, even though there's a sign. I saw somebody like on the trail uh, the other day who was on a motorized skateboard. It, was, it wasn't really a skateboard. It looked like a skateboard, but it was one gigantic rubber wheel. Yeah, it's a, yeah I've seen those. Yeah, forget the name it of that. Seemed like he was, I mean, it wasn't destroying the track and anything, and he was just going around. It didn't seem to bother anybody, so I just let him do it, I guess. So I think it comes down to nothing motorized on the track. It should be nothing motorized. Which I, I got to look at the sign and see what the sign says. What isn't isn't allowed on the track. Nothing motorized. What do we do for somebody who shows up in a wheelchair? What, they're exercising well, on the track. I don't know. I don't well, know. Bicycle's not motorized either. Bicycles mess it up too. Right. Anything with wheels. How about would. foot traffic only, no dragging of objects. I don't know. Yeah, that's not a bad call. I'm gonna let's all kind of look it up and come up with some kind of solution because Mike's right. What if you got a kid? You know, what if I quite often see people walking um, special needs children in those tricycles, like three wheel kind of carts. And I, I wouldn't want to stop somebody from walking around, getting exercise and pushing their handicapped child around. Or a stroller. I mean, people with a stroller. Right. I see strollers there all the time. What about just vehicles? Word vehicles? Would that cover everything? I think motorized isn't bad because you could have a wheelchair that's not motorized on that track or those three wheelers. I see people pushing, you know, like their adult handicapped children in aren't motorized and they have big tires on them. So I think it should be nothing motorized. No dogs dragging chains. I don't see, I don't see too many people down there on, on wheeled vehicles, but. Well, of course, I don't see them dragging chains either. Yeah, that was crazy. I, I have seen strollers. And you're not, I, you wouldn't, I wouldn't stop a woman in a stroller, I don't think. Mm -hmm. And is it time to maintain that path again? You know, well, do we like, do we roll that yeah. thing out? You know, it could be at this point, if they've been doing this for a while, it, it could be in need of maintenance at this point. Well, I know that end where the workout equipment is washed out a little bit again. Oh, when we go by the commuter parking lot. Yeah. We just had that done, didn't we? I think it's been a few years. Really? Wow. Maureen had it done. She's been gone over a year. Jesus, how old? So what was the cost for having that done? And what was what was involved? It was expensive, as I recall, like seven grand or something, wasn't it? Because I'm pretty sure that uh, Greg yeah, Peck did it. Greg Peck. And he widened it in some places and made a better base because it was washing out too much. So you might not need to go through that whole $7,000 thing, but it just... may be time to like scrape it, you know, like we talked about with the infield and a fencing piece some sort and then roll it you know somebody with one of those tamper type rollers like they use on asphalt you know the the big maybe ask the new cylinders maybe ask, maybe ask the new guy that mows maybe he's got the equipment yeah i don't know or it's maybe something knights would do or maybe something hipskies would do 
Hipskis do a lot of asphalt and they definitely have a roller. Wouldn't that help it, Mike, you think, to tamp it down? I think you will. I think if you're going to drag something behind it to loosen it and smooth it, yeah, you're, you're going to want to uh, – foot traffic might pack it back down if you don't go too deep with whatever you're scratching it with. Okay. So we got to figure out how to maintain that thing. Did you send me an email with all those names that you just said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that stone dust, Mike? Is that what you would call that? Yeah, it's stone dust. Okay. That's not too expensive. Um, but if you're doing that huge area, it may be. <laughs> I had, I put a patio in in my backyard in the summer and I got a couple tons of it and it cost me like $37. It was not expensive at all, but it might need a lot more to go around an entire track. It's the labor that's going to cost you. Somebody's going to spend a day there with two guys probably, right? Yeah. Scraping yeah. it, cleaning it, smoothing it, filling it in. So Knights might do it. I'll, I'll, I'll make a list of people. Knights might do it. Hipskies might do it. I don't know the name of it. I don't know the name of our new uh, mower. Who's our new mower? I forget. Yeah, I don't know. Well, do you think that this is something that should be done in the spring then? Yeah, I, I think you're probably just about done this year, right, Mike? You, Eddie, could, what do you, think? you could have it done anytime, really, but maybe do it while it's cool or less people out there. I don't know. Just before the ground freezes? Yeah. Before it's muddy in the spring? I don't know. The hard part might be to find somebody to do it right now, too. Yeah, exactly. Might have to wait anyway. So do you think a job like that would... We, we would have enough money for something like that? Or Let's is find that... out how much it cost. Okay. Because, like, there's not that much money allocated to river road maintenance, you know? Especially if we got to do the thing with the well next spring also. Yeah, that might not be that bad. That might just be a couple thousand dollars. How'd we, what happened there, anyway? How did we lose water? Pump? The pumps doesn't seem to be working. Or there could be a break in a line. Where there's no pressure. There's no water coming up could be a break in the electrical line so really come spring we can go pull the cap off the well and i can plug in the power and see if there's power there i can check that part at least and if there's power there then we got to get the well guy i wonder if maybe you got hit by lightning yeah that's quite possible and we never used it for a long time that doesn't help i know it shouldn't matter but I don't know what it's like down there. I don't know if it's silty or what it's like. But come spring, I went over there and turned it on and nothing happened. The gauge didn't move. No, I had all the valves open, no pressure. Okay. And ran it for a while and didn't see a geyser on the other end. So I just assumed it wasn't pumping. You know, like a broken pipe? Yeah. I'll test I'll test the electric in the spring. That's easy. I know my well a few years ago we thought we blew a pump again. It turned out that when they made a wire connection when they lowered the well down the shaft, one of the connections was a little loose and it burned itself loose. When they pulled it all up, they saw it, reconnected it, everything worked. So it may be something as simple as that. We can figure that out by seeing if we got power there. I can do that next year. Thankfully, we had a lot of water this summer. So the whole um, CIP thing that's coming up, 
Oh, is that yeah. something that we can't really talk about because we don't have this isn't a true formal meeting we need to have everybody here to vote on right we can't vote on anything you can talk about stuff but you can't vote on anything okay this is not an official meeting right right so the only thing i was going to say is uh besides that idea that i mentioned before about that that overhang is if it if there is a a large construction cost with the internet and erica can't get the money for it then we could always have that as an idea for the cip as well fixing the trail no no the getting the internet there to river road uh -huh. that that big if there is a large construction cost yeah i agree what happened with the waterfront? I thought Erica was supposed to get money from the government. I know there's no such thing as government money, but supposed to get some money as COVID relief. Did that get like poured into anyone's budget to help? I have no idea. Costs? No idea. You should ask about that because we spent money at the waterfront and didn't recoup any. I don't mean buying the container. I mean, didn't didn't we have a waterfront this summer? Weren't there lifeguards and all that this summer? Yeah, there were. So that that was a pretty good cost, and I don't think was anyone charged to use the beach. Did did we? Did people yeah, purchase? There were, people. I mean, if you're asking about, you know, were people charged to use the 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 water? They were. I get there was like. 10 season passes sold, I think, something along those lines. Like, it doesn't add up to any money, really, you know? Right, and I think because of that, Erica said she was able to get some money from um, um, kind of COVID, COVID, COVID relief. relief program or something. Yeah. Okay. You should ask about that. Okay, I can ask her. You know, because that's going to help defray some of the costs of like the waterfront's going to be thousands of dollars that we didn't recoup and generally never do. But I think it'd be way worse this past summer than any summer previous. Okay. I'll ask her about it, see what she says. Okay. I know there was supposed to be, we were supposed to get like uh, almost $200,000 or something. Hmm. Not wreck. The whole town. The whole town. Yeah, the town. Yeah, I've never, I've never heard any of this before. So, but it sounds right. like a good deal. Yeah, but I think you had to do specific things that were open to the entire public, and I thought waterfront would be one of those. And I, I, it would be worth asking Erica. Get some input because our. I don't know. I saw the budget. I, I don't know how much rollover money or whatever you want to call it. The, uh, our fund has in it. And just a few things we talked about now would come out of it. Yeah. I, I still don't have a way of looking at that information. You know, mm -hmm. I asked about it and there's no, like, I can't go into the computer and click here and then yeah i know that yeah how much money's in there so although right. i think i should have the ability to do that though you know? yeah, i know that maureen couldn't always have an exact number but she was plus or minus five percent she had an idea what was in there it's got to yeah. be a way mathematically to do it that's our reserve fund all right, that's something else we got to figure out. All right, what else we got? That's all I have. Since it's not a real meeting, you guys got anything else? Eddie? Nothing I, I can, nothing comes to mind. I measured that. I measured that fitness area down there. It looks like 20 by 24 would cover it. I can get I can try to get an idea of what something like that might cost. But 20 by 24, you're looking at if you tried to do it with just four posts, you're gonna look at you're looking at some kind of truss. 
to yeah. be able to span that that wide with just four corners and big posts and big posts you think it's location next to the track would be an issue like in no. terms of where where the posts are going and and then potential runoff onto the track itself that's the only thing i could just think of off the roof the runoff might be the runoff might be a, a little bit of an issue but if you could if it's possible to do a hip roof, you'd only be doing like a quarter of it on each side. So the track side would only get a quarter of the water, which wouldn't be wouldn't be horrendous. And if it was a problem, you could always put a little gutter on that side to redirect it to a yeah. I'll I'll, I'll take a look and see if I can get a number for see if I can get some truss designs to see what would span something like that and how big it would be you obviously you don't want to you don't want it too massive you don't want it to overpower the spot think you need steel columns no i think eight by eights buried in the ground cemented in the ground would be plenty all right that's good so i think we would need to have that in like definite numbers so that it could be submitted by the end of December. I should be able to get some. Okay. All right. What else? You liking your job, Alan? I do. All right, cool. You can well, stick around because you yeah. are the rec director now. I'm, I'm here. All right. It's a full-time job. It is. It is. So it's official November 1st? Yep. All right, congratulations. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, congrats. I could have already been doing it, but I, I told Eric I wanted to push it off to November so that I could finish – the volleyball season because right now being hourly you know i only need to be there 25 hours but as soon as it hits you know the full sure. position it's 35 hours so i just wanted to get through volleyball so that That's i could great. you know have i could do both you know and then as soon as i hit that um i won't have too much volleyball left all right you can start a volleyball league in town and have volleyball there. That's the plan. You can go down, <laughs> go down to ref on Friday nights. Well, they don't, Do they, they ref don't those? There. No. Call your, own. Call your own. All right, gentlemen. I think I'm ready to fall asleep, so I'm calling it a night. All right. Good talking, right, everybody. Folks. Thank you very much. Adios. Adios. <laughs> See you guys. Alan, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Take care.